powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us this Friday. I'm Janelle Slade. And I'm Russ Riesinger. We're heading into the weekend on a high. I'm going to take a look outside at a gorgeous clear night as this warmth will take us into the weekend. But come Sunday, we're moving from the highs right into the lows. And while well, we have one more day of sunshine to soak in before that cold strikes for many across the country, the big chill is already here. At least a dozen states are shivering with temperatures below freezing tonight and it's going to get worse. More than 170 cities face record cold temperatures in the days ahead. In some places, it could be 30 degrees below normal. And for more on those temperatures moving this way, Q2 Chief Forecaster Bob McGuire joins us. And Bob, as we just saw, it is going to get bitter cold. Yeah, some of the coldest air we've seen this season, and we've seen our fair share of it already in October. But let me show you what's going to happen starting tomorrow night. Uh, you'll notice here about 6 or 7 o'clock, uh, this is our 7, I should say 7, 8 a.m. on Saturday morning. Ooh. I didn't think I'd ever get that out. Uh, we got a cold front moving into northern Montana. Then later on that night, that cold front drops all the way down through the Billings area into Wyoming at about maybe 830 or so. Behind that, you'll see scattered rain showers. And then the surge of cold Arctic air moves in behind that, changing the rain to snow. And so that's how this thing is going to play out for us. Now, first off, we want to mention that we do have several winter storm watches up there by Great Falls. In the front range of the Rockies, you could see three to five inches of snow there. By Butte, more like one to three inches. Over in Phillips County in eastern Montana, probably six to eight inches of snow. Then what's left? That's a winter weather advisory across much of eastern Montana. We'll see rain start off, then freezing rain and all that's going to be piled on with snow. Could see in the Billings area maybe two to four inches of snow here, four to seven inches of snow up by the Glasgow area, four to eight inches up by uh, Great Falls. And as you'll see right now, the system is just now starting to make its way into the state, seeing some spotty rain showers moving into the Haver area. But we have all of tomorrow before that stuff makes its way into the Billings area. So enjoy Saturday because after that, you're not going to enjoy much outside. All right, thank you, Bob. Well, in an effort to prepare people for when winter strikes overnight, the Wyoming Highway Patrol today released a scary but solid reminder. Yeah, take a look at this video here. The Wyoming Highway Patrol releasing the footage of this crash just last week on Halloween between a semi and a highway patrol car. The video you were seeing there is from the rear camera of the patrol car. The trooper was pulled over to assist a stranded driver, but was still in the driver's seat and buckled in as the semi careened into her car. Wyoming Highway Patrol says the semi tra truck driver was traveling too fast for the hazardous road conditions. Thankfully, the trooper sustained only minor injuries. Now, the truck driver was not injured, but was cited for careless driving. Wyoming Highway Patrol officials say they released this video to raise awareness of the dangers emergency personnel deal with every day. Newly released testimony in the impeachment inquiry reveals more about the role President Trump's acting White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney had in discussions about Ukraine. And lawyers for former National Security Advisor John Bolton say there's more information on White House meetings that he could share. CBS News correspondent Bafta Yeman has more from Capitol Hill. President Trump denounced the impeachment inquiry again Friday while House Democrats prepare for next week's televised open hearings. Well, they shouldn't be having public hearings. This is a hoax. This is just like the Russian witch hunt. This is just a continuation. As he left the White House for Georgia, the president maintained that his July phone call with the leader of Ukraine, where he brought up investigations of the 2016 election and Joe Biden, was perfect. Here on Capitol Hill, newly released transcripts from two key witnesses suggest the president's acting chief of staff, Mick Mulvaney, helped establish the terms of a possible quid pro quo. Fiona Hill, the former White House senior Russia director, told lawmakers Mulvaney's name came up at a July meeting. She said U.S. Ambassador to the EU, Gordon Sondland, was talking about how he had an agreement with Chief of Staff Mulvaney for a presidential meeting with the Ukrainians if they were going to go forward with investigations. White House Ukraine Director Alex Vindman was at the meeting and said he heard the same thing, that the Ukrainians would have to deliver an investigation into the Bidens. It was explicit. There was no ambiguity. I never said there was a quid pro quo because there isn't. Mulvaney, who ignored a subpoena to testify Friday, has downplayed his role. And in a court filing, lawyers for former National Security Advisor John Bolton say he has more he can share with Congress if a federal judge clears the way. Bolton, they write, had many relevant meetings and conversations that have not yet been discussed in the testimonies thus far. Both the Imam, CBS News, Capitol Hill. But Bolton failed to appear for a deposition yesterday. House committees declined to subpoena him. 
On the topic of possible impeachment, U.S. Senator John Tester weighed in with Montana reporters today in Helena. Well, Tester, a Democrat, noted the impeachment process is in the House, and it's, he says it shouldn't be affecting business in the Senate. But he says Republican Senate leader Mitch McConnell is now keeping many bills off the floor, such as funding for community health centers and other appropriations bills. And still, Tester says the Republican majority continues to act quickly to confirm federal judges nominated by the president. Now, in response, McConnell's office tells MTN News today that Democrats are to blame for holding up defense spending with a filibuster and violating a budget deal struck earlier this year. Now, Tester says issues like health care and infrastructure need to come first, but... When Montanans do ask about possible impeachment, he says it's a process the Senate may have to deal with. Once the House gets done with the process, if they choose to move forward and send it over to the Senate, uh, in other words, if they vote to impeach and send it over to the Senate, then uh, we'll deal with the facts that, that, that come out uh, and uh, act as a, a jury with, a, with the Chief Justice overseeing the Senate and uh, the senators being the jury and deal with the facts and make the call to the best of our ability, uh, either to acquit or to convict. It takes two-thirds majority of the Senate to convict a president on impeachment charges. Rap star Kanye West recently announced plans to move manufacturing of his Yeezy shoe brand back to the United States. More specifically, Cody, Wyoming. Within the next two years, West says he'll use his 4,000-acre ranch in the Cowboy State as the company's headquarters. Besides moving manufacturing back to the U.S., West vowed to begin making environmentally sustainable shoes using hemp and cotton. Now, the rapper could be using his latest idea as a springboard for a 2024 presidential run. Speaking at Fast Company's Innovation Festival, he said, quote, When I run for president in 2024, we would have created so many jobs. I'm not going to run. I'm going to walk. In other news tonight, millions of animals across the U.S. will end up in local animal shelters this year, and millions of those will be killed. Well, today, Q2 Zoe Zandora caught up with a group of volunteers traveling across the country in an effort to save the lives of three. About six million animals enter shelters every year, and approximately two million animals are killed, roughly 22 percent of them being dogs and 45 percent of them being cats. Some of the many groups trying to make a difference, seven volunteers transporting three dogs on the long leg of a trip from Panhandle, Texas to Bozeman, Montana. We'll save just days away from euthanasia. They are fantastic travelers. They're all so sweet. They're going to make somebody really, really good pets. Do your, do your homework. We, we really do a lot to um, take care of our pets and love them. We just want to bring kind of awareness to this. I didn't know if my methods of training and, and uh, interacting with them were going to be as effective, but it turns out it's worked great. The woman housing these three dogs, Alana Smith, and she says it's extremely upsetting to think about how many millions of pets are put to sleep in our country every year. If you can make a difference with with a few of them, you know, it, I feel like that's all you can do. And if everybody would do what they can do, whether it's donating to a rescue that pulls them and, and finds home for them, or supporting a shelter, especially a non-kill shelter, um, you know, you can just do whatever you can do to make a difference. Three more dogs saved awaiting their forever home. In Billings, Zoe Zandora, MTN News. And Russ just told me he wants all three, but <laughs> Alana says she's already found a home for one of the dogs. Well, happy birthday, Montana. The state capitol echoed this morning with the ringing of the statehood centennial bell, commemorating Montana's admittance into the union 130 years ago and also celebrating a new teacher of the year. Historians, educators, and proud Montanans gathered for that occasion and to honor Deborah Crow from the Garrison School as the Montana History Teacher of the Year. She's the first rural teacher to receive that honor. Crow utilizes a traveling historical society trunk and field trips to show her students that history is all around them. She told MTN history is key to our future and she's proud to share that with her students. I love working with children. I love um, inspiring them. I love it when they say, oh, I got that. Or even like today, oh yeah, that's the history locker lady. Uh, those are joys in my classroom. 
Well, as part of the award, Curl will receive more than $3,000. She plans on using that money for some additional field trips and a few surprises for her students. Pretty fun. Congratulations. Up next on Q2, a story about putting a smile on other people's faces should definitely bring one to yours. We'll check it out. And later in sports, Weston Senior playing quarterfinal football. Only one survived. Scott will show you show us who has reached the semis. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Breen. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.